Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocko you boy coming at you once again with another Age of Sigmar video. In this AOS general class, we're gonna do a Rocco reacts to the new Daughters of Cain battle tome. Uh it's now out. Not everyone was as excited about it for all the night haunt leaks and everything. This book was kept very close to the vest. And so now I have to react to it like a normal person would. And that's okay. But let me go through, because this was popular for the Night Haunt, um, when, like, I do, like, private coaching for, like, friends, or teammates, or clubmates, when a new book comes out, I'll, you know, give them the whole lowdown, but a few, a few things stand out to me that get me really excited, and I have three things for the Daughters of Cain Tome that I am very excited about, that might fly under the radar because everyone's excited about certain things and like oh Marathi has a a way to one shot her and let's be honest here that's going to be FAQ'd really quickly and she'll go back to just taking her three wounds a turn and life will go back to normal but here's Rocco's three things that are very very exciting to him and number one uh, Xanthar Kai, the sub-faction, the snake sub-faction, Cobra Kai, as it's known across the internet, uh, I really like it. Normally, I'm more of a Keltnar retreat and charge kind of person myself, but Xanthar Kai, with the snakes being battle line, and that they can fight on death, I really think will help spear snakes come back. Um, I have had a friend who... Love spear snakes. I've personally grown to hate them, but they take buffs really well. They have for since the book dropped, where it was an argument of do I put Marathi or do I bring like a couple units of 15 snakes? Now is like the question because they got an update to the war scroll where after the first time they fight, they do their mortal wounds on a two up, you get a big unit of snakes. They go and they stab, you give them Witch Brew to give them some kind of a buff for the round, because that got changed. Because Witch Brew lets you get the effects earlier of their new blood rights table. So, you know, they could be plus one to hit and plus one to wound from the table early, stabbing you, having bonuses to charge thanks to the snake combat hero. Maybe there's a mind raiser on there. And they dumpster you, they blender you first. Stab you with the spears, mortal wound you. If for some reason you even get to fight back and kill a couple, guess what? They're going to stab you again. Big fan of this. I feel like because the snakes are more elite anyway, the, the, the double fighting makes up for their lack of numbers. You know, I, I really am liking this. Also, retreat and charge is a fantastic thing. Keltnar all the way. But, you know, snakes. Snakes are good. Uh, going back to the blood rights table real quick, my second thing is that I like that the blood rights table lost its reroll ones to all the abilities, and now it's just a flat plus one modifier. Uh, I know, that's that's crazy that I said that. I've played against a lot of Daughters of Cain, a lot. Uh, so much so people don't believe me when I say how much I've played against it. And I like that it's getting the modern rules update and they didn't keep the rerolling ones to hit. I, I really do like the, the straight-up bonuses of the pluses because as much as rerolling the ones are great, you're going to run into some negative modifiers to hit, and now some of them to wound as well. And when most of the Daughters of Cain stuff naturally can wound on a three, and like the Witch Elves and Sisters of Slaughter, the, the High Gladiatrix can, can do a buff where it's plus one to the wound characteristic. I remember right uh, which means you can very reliably keep them on a two and then you can throw in like the triumph and different things but with all these you know these minuses to hit and wound flying around I would rather stay on a three that then I can be like cool I'm gonna all out attack and go back to a two up instead of just being like yeah I'm a four re-rolling ones come at me uh and I say that, too, as a Deepkin player, because I experience this every time someone charges into my Deepkin Namardi Reavers, where they're almost always 
near Shelly baby girl with her large aura. And and as a reminder, when I look at new books, I look at things that I've already played against or own to be like, okay, is there a power pairing? Is there a combo? And this reminds me of the Reavers because they get plus one to hit if you are within short range of them, like nine inches of the unit you're targeting. And then if they're near the turtle and shooting someone near the turtle, they get another plus one to hit, which counterbalances the Unleash Hell minus one to hit. And... This blood rights table is giving me that feeling because you can, you know, spend the command point to give them all out attack in the combat phase, and then you've got the blood rights table plus one to attack, and then you know we get back down to that two or the three, you know, depending on the different buffs, and it's just gonna be a blender, which is why I'm glad they lost the reeling ones to hit. Um. Because it just it makes the damage more reliable mathematically with having a couple sources of plus one to hit. It you know? It's nice. It's really nice when most of your base stats are threes and threes. Threes to hit and threes to wound. Uh and you know, speaking of witch elves and sisters of slaughter and just feeling good about all this, the shields the shields I have been since Daughters of Cain has been a thing, and they've, they've had a couple War Scroll reworks, and they've had some updates from Broken Realms, and I love that the shields are a, on a save of a six up, you reflect a mortal wound back to your opponent. Always have loved it. Having previously seen big blocks of like 30 witch elves that I've had to chew through where I've done more damage to them than they did to me because I mortal wounded myself, tr daring to try to kill them. And then, you know, they'd have like a, the, the prayer where they when they die, they could fight again or do a mortal, whatever it was. I don't even remember. It's just buckets of mortal wounds is what I feel in my soul every time I see a witch elf with the, the freaking shields. And now they've gotten better because it's not just a plus one to save in combat. Now it is just, it changes the save characteristic of the model carrying the shield to a five up. Where that is just fantastic. Uh, and if it's still in combat, I'm going to double check. Hold on. Not crazy coming back from checking. Like, holes for talent. We did it. Yes, if they are armed with the shields, it says off onto the side of the war scroll that they get a 5-up safe characteristic. When you pair this with blood shield to be the ability off of, like, the cauldrons of blood, it gives out a big old aura of plus one to save. That means they're going to be a 4-up save. And... Then you can all out defense them and keep them to be a four up save, ignoring one rend. And then, I know, and then, and then, and then, uh, they're going to get their ward save, which is normally a six up, but thanks to the blood rights table, it can be a five up now towards the end of the game. And that is just huge because you would think that the faction that should be all glass cannons, murdery life. Stab you uh, wouldn't be extremely durable, but like their old iteration, they still are really durable. And just like bodies alone, if you do go the horde mentality, because there's a sub faction that lets you get extra reinforced units, uh, you're going to be so many wounds to chew through with the good save and the ward save. And it's it rally being a thing, you know, uh, throw out an emerald life swarm to return bodies of one wound models. You know, this faction is in a very good spot. And I did a bonus for the night haunt. So I'm going to do one here. This is a, a like a pick out of left field that I really do love and adore is that the avatar of Kane is now always alive. So, before no one took the avatar on foot, they always stuck it on the back of a cauldron. You had to use a prayer up to awaken it. So it could swing with its really good sword. And it, it has an okay shooting attack, nothing to write home about. But you took it for the big freaking sword. 
and it also used to give bonuses to prayers and stuff. And now I don't even care if that's still there. It's got a ward save. It's got uh, it can walk on its own. It's it's like 155 points, and it is just a badass model. And there's nothing saying you can't take the 40k one that's on fire and then just use the appropriate age of sigmar base as long as like the heights and stuff are the same uh and yeah it's really freaking cool now that you get a behemoth that walks around and can dish out hurt and people have to worry about it and now it's just with daughters of cain this is threat assessment the army All right i don't think marathi is an auto clue at, anymore she can be She's nice. You could include her. It's not going to ruin your day if you don't go Marathi and the Bow Snakes. But you could still play that. Marathi got a little more expensive and so did the Bow Snakes. But, you know, it's, you know, you don't care. But you now can open up the Horde play style, which gives me hope for when there's a Skaven book. Um, You know, it gives me hope. That they'll get the rule right with allowing extra reinforcements on Skaven, on Goblins, for uh, Gloom Spike Gits. And I think that it's really cool that the very cool Avatar model finally can walk on its own two feet. You don't have to waste a resource to keep it alive. You don't have to wait until round three. It just goes up and starts smacking fools. And it's like, what do I kill? The Marathi that can only take three wounds a turn? Because they will fix the loophole. The Avatar of Cain that normally should be like, you think a distraction piece, but it could do some serious freaking damage with a, with a damage three sword. Do I worry about the big horde of witch elves that will murder me if I try to attack them? There, there are no right answers because it just feels like you're wasting your time trying to pick this army apart. And that is why I think it's such a great book. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to class today. Again, leave a like. I know you probably tuned out by now. Uh, leave a like. Uh, drop a comment or something else you want me to cover. And uh, as I like to say at the end of all of our videos, class dismissed. Bye. Also, tell me if you like the new Zoom thin thing. I, I try, I'm messing with my camera settings again. Hopefully I stayed in HD this time. All right, bye.